Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies this morning. And joining us to review the papers is Professor Kamilu Sani Fage. He's from the Department of Political Science by Yero University, Kano. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, so this morning we'll begin with the punch. Now, the punch, well, it leads with import duty. Federal government may ground 60 private jets today. Top bank chairman, business moguls affected. NAMA guest list of affected planes. So we're seeing, um, um, we're seeing where, you know, <laughs> Some private jets may just be grounded. I mean, this is the major story here. I don't think it's something that, um, well, I just want to get your take on this. Yeah, you see, the, the story is that it shows the two different Nigeria that we are existing in, uh, that uh, big uh, people, uh, you know, are not paying tax, and it is in hundreds of billions of Naira, especially on their jet. And secondly, most of them have registered their jets, uh, private jet, outside Nigeria. So I think this is um, one area where the government has to look into, uh, even though, um, according to the story, they have been trying to uh, a lobby in the presidency so that these things at least, either it will be waived or delayed or whatever. But in fact, uh, the issue is that um, this shows, you know, the disparity that exists in Nigeria and that, uh, you know, the ordinary people are uh, squeezed into paying taxes, but uh, the uh, big ones are going scot free. So I think this is what makes the story interesting to mm. show how uh, things are different in Nigeria. So what's the, aside grounding the jets, what's, what are they supposed to be doing? Because I mean, in other climes, for instance, if you go to the US, if you do anything, tax evasion or something like that, you definitely be prosecuted for that. So is it just here we're saying, oh, we're going to ground their jets because they're not paying taxes. Is that going to be a legal, um, a legal way to go about this as well? Yeah, this is what I'm trying to say about the disparity. You know, mm. anywhere tax evasion is a serious uh, uh, offense, offense yeah. and uh, is punishable according to the law. Uh, but here we are, uh, the government is just trying to say, okay, we are going to ground it. So after the grounding, what next? People will expect something to be done uh, on them, at least uh, so that a lesson should be taught to Nigerians that no matter how big you are, you cannot avoid tax and then go uh, scotch free. So that is what I'm trying to say that, look, we, it is an interesting story uh, to Nigerians uh, to see how it will end, how it will unfold and how it will end, whether it will just stop at... Uh, uh, you know, making them to pay, and that's all. Nothing is done, but uh, we hope something should be will be done by the government, at least to show that nobody is above the law. I remember some uh, about a year or two ago, we were in similar position, and uh, you know, after that one, nobody hears anything about what happened. So we hope this one will not be swept under the carpet. Uh, you know, after uh, the whole scene, maybe next week or this thing, it will be over. Mm. All right, so let's talk about <laughs> fuel price. And this is something we've been thinking about for over a week now. So here on the punch, it also says, Dangote meets marketers Tuesday over new petrol price. So we've seen the petrol price, you know, jump at least. There's been a price hike for three, about three times in two months thereabouts. And as of right now, it is one, well, 998 Naira in Lagos. That is at NNPC fuel stations um, and 1,030 Naira in Abuja. But other stations are selling for 1,050 Naira and above. So this is the new reality that we have to face but if we're seeing that dangote meets marketers on tuesday um over new petrol price is that going to be maybe a price review whereby we're looking at um a, i would say a significant reduction where it's even more affordable for nigerians and 
yeah is that going to be possible is that what we think um they might be discussing no i don't think it is going to be possible for the near future uh, i don't want to be uh, to sound like a prophet of doom but the reality is that if you now put everything around you see that um, uh, at least they are not going to this uh, dis, uh, discussions will not bring down the cost of uh, oil uh, for the time being the reason is simple that even though they are going to Dangote is going to get it in naira uh, not uh, you know uh, in dollars and even though there are a lot of costs that have been cut by uh, if we now concentrate on Dangote, yeah, the cost of transportation, insurance, uh, you know, uh, whatever, all the costs, uh, the costs that are associated with importation of oil are cut. So under normal circumstances, one will see that uh, about 50% of the cost has been cut down. But the fact is that uh, the government and the leaders and uh, you know are now telling us something that we don't pay as much attention on they are talking of putting the cost of uh, the price i mean the oil to be at par with international market so what they are basically telling us indirectly is that look even though everything will be in Naira, uh, we have to now make it, uh, you know, according to uh, the international market. And by international market, it is, you know, in a uh, price in dollars. And already we have devalued the Naira uh, mm -hmm. to such extent. So logically, when this is what is going to happen, that nobody is going to sell it below the international market. And if it is that, if that is the case, we are not likely going to see uh, the price of uh, petroleum coming down. That is one thing. Secondly, if you read the story, you know, the, even the uh, private, you know, companies are saying that uh, they should be, uh, Dangote should sell it to them at 1,000 naira. Uh, what the way he's giving it to uh, NNPC. So if that is the case, which means we are going to see anything above 1,000 Naira. We, don't, we wouldn't expect somebody to go and buy it at 1,000 Naira and come and sell it below that. Already here in Kano, uh, the cheapest is 1,100 mm. uh, per litre. In some places, it is up to 1,000. Uh, 300. Yeah. So these are the things that uh, the, the, as you call it, the new reality now, which uh, uh, I don't know, uh, despite the hardship that this thing is generating, but the government doesn't seem to care about this issue. Mm. Well, in speaking about our new reality, there is another story uh, just at the bottom that says cooking gas price jumps to 1500 naira per kg so we're seeing the petrol um, price hike on one hand and now cooking gas on another and especially if you know they're talking about cng um you know conversion so people can convert to you know um gas instead of using petrol even the gas right now is also expensive so what is happening in Nigeria? How can we get back to a world where, you know, things were not this expensive? Maybe pre-May 29, 2023. Is that possible? Yeah, it's possible if there is a political will on the part of the leadership mm. uh, that uh, they know uh, this, uh, you know, subsidy issue and the devaluation of the Naira are the main culprit of where we are now, the problems that we are in. And uh, the government and the leaders don't seem to be uh, concerned about addressing this issue. We have said it several times that, uh, look, the, the whole thing is that when you roll up a uh, public policy and you find out that it is detrimental, it is negative, it is not yielding the result. Instead of blindly following that one, you can now take uh, the outcome of it as input and you uh, reassess yourself and now take uh, appropriate measures. Either you adjust the policy or sometimes you even abandon the policy totally uh, in order to do this but you know our leadership doesn't seem to care 
where the AMO are like a democratic uh, leaders where you know the wishes of the people is the uh, the command of uh uh, the leaders. But here we are, you know, despite that, they keep on rolling so many things. In fact, uh, there are so many frightening uh, statistics that, uh, uh, you know, roll out to Nigerians, and uh, we don't seem to get to that one. Like what they are telling us now is that with the crisis in the Middle East, the cost of uh, oil and other things will increase. It will hmm. rise in the, in the global market. So Nigerians should expect that one, that we are going to have to pay more. So these are the uh, lack of empathy that I can say with the leadership. So I, I, I think, um, like you say, this is a new reality hmm. that uh, Nigerians have to uh, accept or we have to pressurize our leaders to now respond to our needs. <laughs> Well, there's another story here that says um, God never planned suffering for Nigeria. And that is according to the former president, Olusegun Basanjo. In fact, he was speaking um, at a service yesterday where he was saying that we're not managing the resources that God has blessed us with. Of course, Nigeria is blessed with so much. We have so many natural resources, even though a lot of times we're always thinking, oh, our natural resource um, that we have is crude. And since the oil boom came, um, everyone forgot about agriculture, about other things. And I was speaking earlier where I was saying that we're not harnessing the potentials that we have, the opportunities, even the human capital, the talents that we have in Nigeria. Um, we're not harnessing it. We're not even doing anything about tourism. We're not trying so hard when it comes to looking for ways to boost our economy. But with Obasu just saying this, do you think they did not know about that in the first place? And what is the way forward? How can we make sure that Nigeria is just a better country for everyone? Yeah, you see, the, the leaders know it. They are very much aware of mm. it. One reason is that our level, you know, of uh, mismanagement and abuse. We have uh, such abundant resources that if we are to have uh, to mobilize it, okay, to harness the resources, and uh, Nigeria would have been far, far, far better than where where we are yeah. today. Uh, remember when uh, we are about to get our independence, our uh, half pop that Nigeria, India, and uh, Brazil would be uh, the past developing uh, countries in the world. But the two are now far, far ahead of Nigeria because they are able to address the little that they have. They are able to harness it and use it for their own, uh, you know, benefit and the benefit of their people. So the way out is that no matter how much abundant resources you have, if you don't mobilize them, they are not going to be a source of any energy or any uh, power to you or any benefit. Uh, we have so many uh, resources and yet we abandon it. So there is need to harmonize, to harness those resources. Secondly, there is need for management because most of the problem is a management, the managerial issue that we have it and we are abusing it we don't use listen we want a very cheap source like when uh, we have oil we abandon everything uh, because uh, oil is a cash cow it is uh, where mm. you can get cheap and easy money so we paid attention on that even at that we did take step to refine our own we just resort to <clears throat> you know selling the uh, crude and buying our needs and uh, above all the side factor is corruption mm. so uh, unless we take these three measures you know mobilize the resources manage them effectively and fight corruption otherwise we cannot expect to go anywhere by being dependent on foreign investors foreign marketers dates and so on these are the things that we are doing which is you know we are mortgaging our future mm. by still remaining on this uh, neoliberal kind of uh, approach to our needs yeah um, I totally agree with you and you know it is said if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect a change then nothing is going to happen you're still going to remain in that same spot and it's okay for us to talk about it and say you know what um, we're not harnessing but what are we doing how 
are the leaders going to do better? And I love the fact that you had spoken about political will. Of course, we know corruption is a major thing um, that has just pulled us back, really, as a nation. And hopefully, if we start to look for ways to um, get free from corruption, we might just have a better nation because then you would have leaders who are there for, you know, the right purpose, the right cause, who have the heart of the people and they want to do what is right for the people as well. And that is what true democracy is about anyway. Anyways, we're going to move over to another um, paper this morning and it says on the daily trust well this leads with lagdo dam high risk states brace for floods um the writer here says um Nimet predicts thunderstorms moderate rains in taraba bernu and others government ask res residents to relocate set up idp camps um and, and i'm sure this is something they've said over time we saw what happened in bernu the, the other um i think a month ago and what people said was it was just negligence uh, but now um I mean, I love the fact that they are already telling people that they should move, but that's not what we're going to dwell on. There is a small story that says severe malnutrition rises by 51% in the north. I want to get your take on this, please. Yeah, you know, malnutrition and other things are the side effect uh, of uh, the current uh, economic reality that we are facing. And uh, the story is that uh, it is uh, M MSF, you know, Medicines and Frontier, that um, is now drawing the attention of Nigeria that, uh, look, what happened is between last year and this year, uh, you know, malnutrition has risen by by 51 percent mm -hmm. and uh, there are also other things that are related preventable diseases also you know are so acute in the, the place in the north and others so many things so i think these are some of the uh, what I was, I was trying to say earlier on these are some of the statistics that should have drawn the attention of our leaders that look we are in serious social economic and political problem as a result of these policies that we are pursuing you can't expect a situation where you have you know malnutrition rising by 51 percent within a year and uh, now you just think uh, everything is normal the government has to look at it and besides there are uh, other preventable diseases that um, uh, we they are rampaging, you know, the, the, the people. And the fact is that uh, you go to the hospital, there are no vaccines, no anything. Mm. And uh, in fact, even the diseases that uh, we thought uh, that we have eradicated them, like measles and other things, are coming back. So these are serious things which uh, I think our policymakers have to pay attention. They shouldn't be wasting too much attention. I, I don't mean wasting, but they shouldn't be spending too much attention on infrastructural development at the expense of the people. This mm. is what the purpose of the government is. Welfare of the people. And after all, this is part of the first principle, fundamental principle of Nigerian constitution, that the essence of government is to promote the and prevent the welfare and security of Nigerians. Yeah. Infrastructure, uh, this kind of situation time, is not where you pay your attention. Come back to the issues that are affecting the people, and that is how you can. And like the saying goes, if you develop cities at the expense of people, the people will destroy the cities. But if you de develop the people, they will build the cities for you. So I think this is where we, the government and the leaders should look at and uh, pay too uh, much attention on it rather than infrastructure. All right. Um, so, uh, well, there's one here that says PDP governors meet over parties crisis today so this is on the daily trust on the punch is also there it says pdp crisis damagum camp and see wk governors may clash today i want to get your take on what's happening in the pdp because i mean we're seeing clashes with them even the labor party also and these are these are parties that are supposed to be strong opposition to the ruling party of apc right now but if they cannot even get their house in order how are they supposed to be able to tell the ruling party that they're not doing their jobs the way they are supposed to be please i want to get your take on this 
Yeah, you see, the, the PDP crisis uh, since um, 2015, it has been growing up and in fact uh, now uh, another factional leader has come out and these i think governors are now divided uh, about i think six or sub uh, seven of them are in, on one side I, I think about four are on the other side so uh, what we are going likely going to see today is that there is going to be a showdown on the two uh, sides and uh, like you said, rightly said, that if any party is divided among, uh, between, among itself, uh, it is not likely going to be effective. Mm. They are like the opposition parties are not going to be effective. They will be consumed by internal crisis. And that is for the time being. And uh, as time goes on, even if, when the election comes nearer, they will not be able to make any headway in that because they will go to uh, the polls divided uh, among themselves and then they will also contest with uh, uh, other parties the reason for all these things that we are seeing is that actually our parties technically are not real political party as we call them they are more like clubs people just join them for the purpose of you mm. know, using them as a ladder to capture office. That's all. There are no ideologies, uh, common ideologies that bring them together. Uh, they, you know, there is no internal party democracy. There is no disparity discipline. So with this, crisis will always uh, be the, the norm in such parties. And uh, above all, even if uh, we cannot see it visibly, you know, the ruling party may not want them to live in peace. So they may either engineer the crisis in them or at least make sure that uh, even if it is their own crisis, it will make sure that um, uh, it doesn't, uh, they don't resolve it, you know, peacefully or easily. So these are some of the factors. And like I said, uh, it is dangerous for the party. In fact, it is dangerous for uh, the, democratic, the democratic system that we are operating. Because had it been our politicians um, learn, uh, learning lesson from the past, they know it was similar crisis within the parties and between the parties that led to the collapse of the past republic and the uh, collapse of the second republic also and that uh, you know crippled the take up of the aborted side republic and now we are seeing it with spate of violence in so many places look at what happened in the last concluded uh, local government election in river state and mm -hmm. in so many places then this is a like i say is dangerous for peace and unity in the country all right so let's move over to the business ng the business ng here leads with compulsory tin for individual financial transactions sparks debate so a lot of people are a bit worried about this some are saying um, i might not be able to get my money especially if i don't have a tin number but the banks have said that this is a global practice across um the world and it's important that everyone has this but with people also being concerned about their own privacy about their own um you know financial transactions what do you think about this new introduction i mean this was um this was being introduced i think in 2021 with the finance bill but here right now in 2024 it's coming into full bloom and people are a bit concerned what's your take please yeah you see this teen issue um i remember some four years or back uh, uh we are compelled to register you know and have our own team and since then nothing has been done with it and uh, you know the idea then was the information on teen uh you are a national id card and your passport will be the same thing every number you can use it uh, to get it but um as positive as that one is uh you know it has its own side effects like that of privacy, like that one of manipulation and other things, which I think um, even if the government wants to go that one, which is we always try to copy the in thing that is happening in uh, other countries, even if we insist on reviving that issue and going, I think uh, the government should go about it, uh, you know, slowly. Uh, 
uh, they should now take time to enlighten the people about the uh, benefit of it and other things so that at least people will now buy the idea and now register. But if you say you are going to take it at a very short time and you are going to impose it on people, it is going to create crisis. And the usual thing with Nigeria is that somebody will not be uh, up and doing in his uh, assignment. It is only when the time comes, he will now try to show that he's the boss. What I'm saying is that I'm likely going to uh, see that they will now see there is an ultimatum and everybody has to register. And you know, uh, we have to be realistic. Uh, more than, at least in the north, and I think it is the same thing in the south, that if you are to take the level of illiteracy in Nigeria, it's more than 60%. And more than 70% of Nigerians are in rural areas. And they, they, they are now trying to buy the idea of this banking. Now, if you put everything together, you will scare them. Like the way we did when the, the police on uh, Naira re redesign was uh, uh, introduced. Yeah. So everything, we shouldn't, be, we shouldn't be doing it in a militaristic way. There is a democratic system, there is no need to enlighten the people, and there is also need to take into consideration the reality of Nigeria. Like I said, about 70% or more than 70% of Nigerians are in rural area, And uh, more than 70% of those in rural areas are not that educated and enlightened for you All to right. push them into uh, this policy overnight. So even speaking about the Naira scarcity, there's another one here um, that says, um, so it says POS operators raise charge by 50% as Naira scarcity bites harder. In fact, I went to the bank, I think that was on Friday, and I could only take out about 20,000 Naira. There was a limit. And with that, they had to give me in 200 Naira notes. So we're seeing another Naira scarcity here again, which I don't understand. And I wish we can even talk about this even more. But sadly, um, we've run out of time. I want to say thank you for coming. This is how much we can take on of the press this morning. Thank you, Professor. Thank you for having me. All right. Have an amazing day. Okay, we've been speaking with Professor Camille Sani Fage, who's from the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kano. And we've just been taking global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we're talking about the Ondo poll and the importance on building trust with the citizens. And that is what IPC is saying. And please stay with us. <laughs> 